Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again with another LaunchBox news video. Today, we're proud to announce that LaunchBox version 11.12 has been released. And all new LaunchBox and Big Box releases, we have some fixes, improvements, and some awesome new features. In this video, we're mainly going to be covering the new features, but if you're interested in checking out those fixes and improvements, I will leave a link to the changelog in the description. Okay, so first things first, I do have to cover one of these new improvements because it does tie in with a couple of the new features. We have some major performance improvements for the actual import process, not just download speeds or downloads themselves, but performance improvements across the board when it comes to importing your games. And like I mentioned, this ties right in with some of the new features. Uh, so first up, downloads for different platforms can now be queued up so that multiple platforms can be imported quickly without having to wait for their media to download. So in the past, let's say I wanted to import NES and SNES. I would go through the motions and import SNES, it would download all the metadata before everything was finished up, then I could move over to NES. But now with these new performance improvements, we can queue up multiple platforms at the same time before it starts downloading the media. And this one also ties right into the next new feature. All import processes will now import the games before it starts to download the media. And I want to give you a look at this because uh, again, in the past when we were importing games, what we would have to do was wait till it was finished. That's basically what we had to do. You would start the import and it would download the media and metadata as it was going along. And there was really nothing we could do about this. But now with these new performance improvements, LaunchBox will actually import the games before it starts downloading any of the media. So we can actually have those games up and running before that media finishes downloading. I'm going to go through the motions real quick. So I'll just uh, import Dreamcast. And it's going to start importing the games and download the metadata before it starts with the media. So right now, I will have a section ready to go and I can actually start playing if I want to. But as you can see in the bottom, it's now downloading all of that data for me. So we'll go to Dreamcast and uh, you can see it populate as it's downloading. Let's uh, go ahead and start Aqua GT. So right now, we can start playing a game without having to worry about waiting for all of that media to download. Which, in my opinion, is definitely the way to go, because in the past, as a lot of us already know, it did take a while to download media and metadata, especially when we had a ton of games for a certain platform. And finally, with the new features that deal with import and media download, we have this one here. Media downloads can now be saved and resume when exiting and restarting LaunchBox. So uh, we're going to head back over there. I've got LaunchBox downloading all of my media for Dreamcast, and as you can see, it's not all the way done. I'm just going to go ahead and close out of LaunchBox. We'll give it one second. In the past, if you would have done this, it kind of would have just messed everything up for you. It would not have resumed when we started back up, but as soon as I start up LaunchBox, you'll see that it automatically resumes those downloads right here. So it kind of just saved exactly where we are when we were downloading all of that media for Dreamcast. And like I mentioned, in the past, if you would have just shut down LaunchBox like it was, you would have had to restart that download process altogether. So this is also another welcome feature. Now we'll move over to the last new feature in LaunchBox 11.12. It was actually the second highest voted feature on the last poll we had. This is a complete management system for specifying the types of supported controllers for games, including a built-in database with known games, it's fully customizable, and there's new built-in badges. So I'll just give you a little walkthrough on this. Now, if this is the first time you're updating to 11.12, you may have to refresh your metadata. You can actually go up here to Tools, Download Metadata and Media, and instead of downloading media, just specify the metadata itself. So from here, I'm going to select None. That way, it'll rescrape that metadata for us for these games. And then from our database, it'll populate the controller management system. So we'll head over here, back to Tools, Manage Game Controllers. So I've already done this, and as you can see, we have a bunch of different controllers that have been automatically populated. 4-way joystick, 8-way joystick, Atari joystick, all the way up to the Wii Motes, race controllers, race wheels, and things like that. So for the 4-way joystick, associated games, 64 games have been associated with this. Now, if you want to add your own, super easy, I've just added the Xbox One Bluetooth controller here. Haven't specified any games just yet with it, but uh, we'll just start with the 8-way joystick. 355 games have been associated with this controller. We'll just hit Edit, Games, and you can see the games that it's been associated with. So with these, it will be required to use an 8-way joystick. But this is pretty cool because it does specify what kind of controllers we need for each game. 
And uh, if we take a look down the list, we have the Dreamcast keyboard because I just imported those uh, new Dreamcast games and it updated all of that metadata for us. GameCube controller, uh, we have the Wiimote XE light gun for the uh, Atari here. Go to close. And along with this new controller management system, we also have new badges. So for this one, let's just go to Dreamcast. I'll show you that we have some different badges here. So for this game here, we could actually play it with the Dreamcast keyboard. Same thing with Project Justice. Over here with Crazy Taxi 2, Race Controller. And in order to enable these badges, up at the very top, Badges. And you can specify which ones you'd like to show. You can always disable them all if you don't want to have those badges beside it. But uh, personally, I think it's pretty cool. We'll head back to Atari 7800. From here, Atari Joystick can be used with this game, along with the XE Light Gun. And like I mentioned, this is fully customizable. As you saw, I added my Xbox One Bluetooth controller, but I have to personally associate games with it. And this was the second highest voted feature on our last poll, and it's finally finished up. And I think it's a really great addition to LaunchBox and BigBox. So yeah, that's LaunchBox 11.12, and we're really excited about it, and hope you guys are too. We do hope you enjoy this one. If you're interested in checking out the other improvements and fixes with this new release, I will leave a link to the changelog in the description. Keep an eye out on the LaunchBox forum because we do plan on releasing a new poll soon for some new features so you can vote on those. If you have any questions about this one, let us know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.